Paul McGuire is our first speaker tonight, and let me give you a little bit uh, about Paul. Uh, I love this guy, and you'll love him too by the end of tonight. Paul's topic that he was given uh, is the coming one world religion, and you'll hear about that tonight. But before you do, a couple of things you need to know about Paul McGuire is that he was the host of the nationally syndicated talk show, The Paul McGuire Show. He's been a regular commentator, Fox News contributor on the Fox News Network. On CNN, Paul is now hosting a new syndicated talk show, The McGuire Report. He's a professor of Bible prophecy, that's, that's eschatology, at the King's College and Seminary. And Paul is the author of 15 books, including Are You Ready? and The Warning, two excellent books. But tonight, he's got a brand new book, and you want to get your hands on it in light of what's taking place in the world tonight, what you and I are living through now is addressed in a book that Paul has put together. It's called The Day the Dollar Died. The Day the Dollar Died. We even heard today on secular news, on the networks, that the reign of the U.S. dollar is over. The dollar will take second, third, fourth seat over the course of the future. Who knows for sure? But this I know for sure that with what Paul is sharing tonight, you want to make sure that you know the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to make sure that your portfolio is plump with Jesus. <laughs> You'll never lose. Well, I was super blessed to come home one day, not too long ago, a couple weeks ago I think it was. Paul, wasn't it a few weeks ago, History Channel? We went home and turned on, and I didn't know Paul was going to be on there, but uh, Paul was actually on the History Channel on this particular episode regarding the seven signs of the apocalypse. Did anybody see that program? Yeah, it was amazing. I don't like to endorse the History Channel because they really mess things up when they go into the Bible. But they did an awesome job, and thanks to Paul McGuire as he was very, very much consulted uh, on that program. And uh, we're grateful for that. But Paul is putting together a, uh, a television radio, uh, I'm not going to say network, but a, a gathering, a, uh, not a, a building per se, but a, an outreach that Paul is putting together. God is using this guy, and I'm very excited. So please give a warm welcome tonight to Paul McGuire. the Lord. I always uh, am thankful that I make it up the steps without falling on my face before an audience. It would be very embarrassing. Um, hold the hand of the person next to you. Let's just uh, pray one more time. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this evening. And Lord, we pray that you would give people hope and encouragement. And Lord, that you would reveal yourself to people. Lord, we thank you that the word of God is, and the gospel is not a matter of talk, but of power. And we ask, God, that Jesus, you would reveal yourself to people in a profound way through the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Anoint myself and every speaker and touch people in these few days. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I truly respect Pastor Hibbs, and I'm not just saying that as lip service, because he is a true leader. I don't know where he went, but he's a true leader. <laughs> a true leader. And the reason he's a true leader is because he puts his life down on the line and doesn't play it safe. So praise God for this man and pray for him and support him. There are many excellent speakers uh, over the Prophecy Conference, but I also consider it a privilege uh, to be able to speak before what I considered one of my spiritual fathers. Get emotional. In the Lord, David Hawking. I remember many years ago, you know, I did a, a radio show for 10 years here in this market, but I remember when I first came to California, driving around in a car, flipping through the radio, and hearing this guy's voice deep voice. And I'm listening to him talk about the book of Revelation. And I'm 
partially irritated. I partially think he's a psychotic. <laughs> and I'm saying, either this is the biggest egomaniac I've ever met, or he's a sociopath, because he's the first guy I ever heard who talked about the book of Revelation like it made sense. <laughs> and he believed in what he was saying. And I was listening to him, had excellent argument, and I would tune in for years, and that's why I call him a spiritual father in the Lord, because I came from a Christian tradition. Actually, I came from an atheist tradition. But when I, after I accepted Christ, I, I was in a church where kind of, uh, you know, the Alice in Wonderland movie? Who's the, who's the creature that sits and, and smokes the hookah pipe? Caterpillar. The caterpillar. And he's going this way, that way, this way. That was kind of like the theological training that I had. <laughs> I mean, I knew Jesus saved me. That was about, about it. There was a time in my life when I hated this book. As I said, I, I was raised in an atheistic home. And if I had a, a menu choice, and, and Pastor Hibbs, you gave such a great menu choice. I was thinking of my son. He, he goes for uh, three, what, three hamburgers animal style. He's an athlete. If I had three hamburgers animal style, I'd be on the bed for like two weeks. Um, if I had a menu of religions to choose from back before I knew Christ, Christianity would have been on the bottom of the list. That's how much I hated Christianity. In fact, this is true, I literally used to spit on the ground when I would walk by people going to church on Sunday mornings. That's how much I despise Christianity. The only religion that was probably lower than Christianity would be the Hare Krishnas. Now, if you were a Hare Krishna or are, I'm not trying to offend you. Maybe you don't know who they are. They, they were the people that, you know, they had the ponytails and the pajama orange suits, and they would, you know, chant Hare Krishna with the tambourines. And do any of you know who they were? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was probably below Christianity because I didn't really want to jump up and down in an airport with a tambourine <laughs> chanting Hare Krishna. I can even know it. Krishna, Krishna, Rama, Rama. They'll kick me out of here for chanting a demonic, a demonic tune. I didn't know Christ. Here I am talking about Bible prophecy. I'll tell you a little bit later about how I, I was going to say how I found Christ, but that's not true, how Christ found me, how Jesus rescued me. You know, here we are in, in the greatest financial meltdown since perhaps the Great Depression. The world economies are shaking, but you know what? The kingdom of heaven isn't even quivering. It's not shaking. Jesus Christ didn't fall off the throne. And the angels aren't nervous and having anxiety attacks. And the bank of heaven ain't broke. It's eternal. And the best investment you could ever make is to give your life to Jesus Christ because the payoff is eternal. And if you don't know Christ, by the time this conference is over, I pray that you would accept him.